Hi, my name is Christian Waldegrave, Market Analyst at TK, and I'm here to give an update of the conventional tanker markets. It's now the beginning of February, so looking back at what happened uh, to the tanker market in January, rates were generally quite firm through January, which is a continuation of what we saw in the second half of December, and really that was mostly due to seasonal factors. Uh, VLCC rates were at their highest in 10 months, and that was really due to a lot of buying from China. Uh, ahead of the Chinese New Year celebration. So they were drawing in a lot of crude from the Middle East, a lot of West African crude as well, and that really pumped up VLCC rates, uh, especially through the first half of January, and then they've cooled somewhat since the New Year uh, holidays. In the Suez Max market, we've seen good demand for uh, Suez Maxes going East to Asia, but also West to the States as well. Uh, and so Suez Max rates were quite healthy coming out of West Africa in January. And also through the first part of January as well, we saw quite lengthy delays in the Turkish Straits, which meant the rates in the Mediterranean and the Black Sea were firm as well. Those rates have now come off uh, quite a bit, especially in the Med, uh, as the delays in the Turkish Straits, which were as much as 17 or 18 days per round trip, it's now just two days north and south. So um, those delays have come off and that's brought rates down a little bit in the Med and the Black Sea. And then on the Aframaxes, again, we saw good rates for most of January, especially in the Caribbean and in uh, the North Sea and Baltic and the Mediterranean. And again, that's mostly due to bad weather and seasonal factors. We had bad weather in the Caribbean at the load ports, which made, made ships delayed and pushed up rates. Um, and again, in the Mediterranean, we had the Turkish Strait delays through the first half. And then in the North Sea and the Baltic, some bad weather as well. So all those effects really combined to make a a fairly strong tanker market through January, but as I said, those effects have now eased and we are seeing rates come off. And really, I think when you look at it, we usually have stronger rates through the winter months. And I think we've now come to towards the end of that kind of winter spike as the weather starts to improve. And now as well as we look towards February and March, refineries will start to go into seasonal maintenance as well. So we would probably expect that rates will soften a little bit through February and March with just the odd blip here and, in, and there if we get some more weather delays for example, in Europe right now, they're having a cold snap, which might cause some ice in the Baltic uh, and a pop in rates there. But otherwise, we think we're coming towards the end of that winter seasonal strong period now and starting to move into that shoulder season of weaker rates. In terms of what else has been happening in the tanker market, the big news from January uh, was the uh, refinery closures that have happened uh, on both sides of the Atlantic. So we saw the closure of the Havensa refinery in the Caribbean. Uh, that's a 350,000 barrel a day refinery that's supplying the states with uh, refined products. And then in Europe, the independent refiner Petroplus um, went into insolvency in January. And so now there's a big question mark over its five refineries in Europe and whether they'll be sold or converted into uh, storage and that kind of thing. I think we're still waiting to see what the long-term effects of these refinery closures are going to be. But our gut feeling is that in the longer term, this is going to help the products trade and especially the longer haul movements of products, perhaps from the Middle East, from India, from the Far East, uh, into the Europe and the United States to replace that lost refining capacity. So that's definitely a longer term trend to keep an eye on going forward. So that's our review for what happened in January and join us again next month and we'll talk about what happened in the tanker market in February.